Good evening and welcome to the WDSU News Hot Seat. I'm Travers Mackle. Tonight we continue our series of debates. Up right now, Orleans Parish Civil Court Judge, District B. This is an open seat. Three candidates have qualified to run. They are all here. They are all Democrats. They are Stephanie Bridges, David Jefferson, Jeff Dye, and Marissa Hutter Barrett, who is a judge in First City Court. Thank you all for being here. We have a lot to get to, so we're going to start you. with opening statements. Ms. Bridges, we'll start with you. We're going alphabetically. You have 60 seconds to let people know why you feel you're the best candidate for this position. My name is Stephanie Bridges, and I'm a lifelong resident of the city of New Orleans. I am a wife and a proud mother of four young men, outstanding young men, I should state. I am... I've served my community my entire life. I am the executive director of the longest, oldest, I should say, human relations organization in this city. I believe that I'm the best candidate because I have the most diverse background in that I served as a city attorney for four years, as well as leading this nonprofit organization. I wanna thank you for your support and for your vote. And recently I made history in that I was disqualified to serve as a candidate. And I had to go all the way to the Supreme Court, which completely reversed the lower court's decision. And so as a result of that, I set president in e-filing of, of the taxes. So I am humbly asking you for your support. And I look forward to letting you know what my vision is for the court if I become judge. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Dye, you have 60 seconds to make an opening statement. Thank you very much, Travers, for the opportunity to participate tonight. I'm David Jefferson Dye. I go by my middle name, Jeff. I'm number eight on the ballot. I'm running for, civil, for judge at Civil District Court because I want to improve the courthouse for all people in the parish of Orleans, in Orleans Parish. And I want to improve public confidence in the court. I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee, and I started working in Louisiana and in particular New Orleans in 1992. In 1998, I made New Orleans my permanent home. I attended Tulane Law School and in 2001, I opened up my own solo law practice. Since then, I've represented clients in federal and state courts across Louisiana and all manner of different types of cases. And I've handled real estate and business transactions in excess of $15 million. I do both plaintiff and defense work and I have experience in federal court and also have jury trial experience. I've also done pro bono criminal defense work. As a judge, my decisions will be unbiased and they'll be based on the law and they'll be based on the evidence and the rules of court. I'll run an efficient professional courtroom with the utmost respect for all parties, attorneys and witnesses. I, I think that New Orleans deserves a, a great courthouse, that one that it can be proud of, and I ask for your support. Thank All you. All right, Judge Hunter Barrett, you can wrap us up here in opening statements. You have 60 seconds as well. Thank you kindly. Good evening. I'm Judge Marissa Hutter Barrett, and I'm offering myself as a candidate for judge of Civil District Court Division B because I believe in service and because I am confident that my background and my compassion for people provide me with something special to offer in service to our community. I've had the honor to serve under three judges, providing me with the institutional knowledge of the judicial system from the inside. On the other side of the bench, as a civil litigation attorney, has given me the perspective of those standing before a judge. I'm currently serving our community as a judge in First City Court, wherein I've handled nearly 2,000 eviction matters, over 20 trials, over 100 hearings, and also performed over 40 marriages free of charge as the only judge in Orleans Parish offering to serve in perform weddings for the public. My inherent nature to treat everyone that I encounter with kindness, compassion, and respect has provided me with the ability to be able to effectively communicate with a diverse population, which I know that I have exhibited in my time as a law clerk, as an attorney, and as a sitting judge. Thank you. All right, here's another 60 seconds, one minute to answer this one. There is a stigma at civil court that it is very plaintiff friendly. If elected, what would be your policy for defendants, for large companies, to try and level the playing field or at least erase that stigma that it's just a completely plaintiff-friendly courthouse? You have 60 seconds for that. So I'm currently sitting judge, as stated previously, mm -hmm. and all cases are handled by reviewing the evidence and applying the applicable law. So I understand while there is a stigma, 
I do currently ensure that all parties have a fair chance and all matters are treated with fairness, dignity, and respect, and I continue to do the same if, in fact, I'm elected to civil district court. All right, Mr. Dye, same question. There is a stigma in New Orleans that it's a plaintiff-friendly courthouse. If elected, what would be your policy to try to make sure the, le the playing field is level for all parties? Well, first and foremost, I'm going to adhere to the code of evidence. Uh, I've represented both large corporations, small corporations, small businesses, and individual clients, uh, plaintiffs in uh, that court, both plaintiff and defense work. I uh, do what my clients need. And the stigma is real. I've been both a jury foreman and seen it from a jury foreman standpoint. I've seen it as uh, experience. What I would do is adhere to the rules of evidence. I believe um, that I have a lot, well, I do have a lot of experience in engaging and using expert witnesses. And I think that's where one of the pitfalls are. You have a lot of varying levels of quality and expert witnesses. And I'm going to adhere to the Dober rules as far as what qualifies as fair uh, expert witness testimony and what doesn't qualify as expert witness testimony. All right, same question, Ms. Bridges. You also have 60 seconds. What would be your policies or practices to try and level the playing field and erase that stigma at civil court? Well, it is true that, that there is a stigma. Uh, at civil district court, but what I would bring to the to the entire court system is I too would follow the code of evidence and make certain that everybody has a fair shot in my courtroom. I will tell you my background is I've dealt with uh, small cases, personal injury cases, contract cases. I've handled large uh, firms, plaintiff firms and defense firms. So I understand the concept of fairness and justice, and that's what I would bring to my courtroom. All right, we're gonna start this question with you, Mr. Dye, okay. 60 seconds as well. How would you use technology if elected? There's also a stigma that the court is old, it's antiquated, it's actually shut down right now Correct. because of a fire. How would you allow people to access records and do you support signing electronically and using Zoom? In a nutshell, in 60 seconds, how would you bring the court better technology. Well, there are two aspects to this question, okay? First off is how the court works when you're not actually in the courtroom. And the court is way behind the level of technology that we see in federal court. And I've worked in federal court. Federal court currently is less expensive and more efficient to operate in than state court. Um, state court could learn a lot by running uh, systems that are similar to the federal PACER system to where all documents are available. And you have a very fair, even keeled uh, fee system. Uh, right now, every parish, all 64 parishes in the state are running their own independent systems. Some are four more advanced than others. So outside the courtroom, I would look for streamlining the whole process to where it's similar to what we see in federal court. Inside the courtroom, I'm actually very much in favor of in-person hearings for most matters. If you have uncontested matters, consent agreements, consent judgments, things where there's consent, where there's not a need for witness testimony and evidentiary materials to be uh, introduced, then I'm in favor of uh, it, using the technology in those cases, but otherwise have an in-person hearing. All right, Ms. Bridges, same question, 60 seconds. What would you do to better the technology aspects if elected at civil district court? Right now, the civil district court, I believe we're, we're last when it comes to technology. I mean, you can't even pay with a credit card if you're paying for your, your pleading, your fees, and that type of thing. So I want to encourage our court system to make certain that our technology is up to stuff. One of the things that I want to do is have a, a weekly Zoom day hearing. And that's for individuals who are working and they, you know, and they can't come to the office or come to the courtroom, I should say, without, uh, you know, leaving their job and, taking away their ability to earn a living. So I want to have Zoom um, um, hearings just specifically for those individuals who can't afford to come to the courtroom. All right, Judge, thank you, Ms. Bridges. Judge, 60 seconds, same question. What would be your plan to enhance technology if you're elected? As you stated previously, our court is currently shut down, and that is because of the fire. So during this time period, I have, in fact, ensured that all parties are being accommodated by having hearings via Zoom if they do, in fact, consent to these things. And further, when I did, in fact, take the bench at First City Court, it was amidst COVID. So I made sure that all the hearings that could be, in fact, proceeding via Zoom and accommodating the, wit the litigants and witnesses, I made sure that that took place. As it relates to making sure or how to proceed, 
techno technologically in the future, if I do get elected to civil district court, it would be the same for all intents and purposes, considering I would ensure that all litigants are accommodated. And if Zoom is more feasible or more convenient for the parties, I will in fact proceed that way. Um, in relation to the case management system and things of that nature to ensure that the filings go a little bit faster and swifter and things of that nature, even electronic signing, uh, we are working um, in en banc with the technology uh, group to ensure that we make plans to be more technologically savvy. All right, thank you. We'll start this one with you, Ms. Bridges. You have 60 seconds for this one. We talked before this debate started about family courts. There are two dedicated family courts. A lot of family issues come through civil court. The lowest judge, though, which will be one of you all, the lowest ranking judge, has to handle a lot of family matters. Here's a question. You have 60 seconds for it. Should they continue to have two dedicated family courts at civil district court, or should they go back to the old system where all judges handle family matters? You have 60 seconds. I think they should continue to have two dedicated judges to family court. I you know, lived in the court, uh, in the civil district court, handling family uh, matters, uh, divorce, child support, um, child uh, welfare cases. Uh, also child custody cases. So I know how, what a tremendous strain it could be on, a, on a, an individual who's not familiar with those various uh, cases. And so if I am elected, I will have the uh, experience to go into that courtroom because I, my understanding is that this particular seat will be assigned uh, family matters to assist the other two uh, uh, dedicated judges and I'll have that experience to carry to carry on to make certain that my courtroom will be fair and just for all of the litigants involved all right mr. die same question should yes. they keep the two dedicated ones with the junior judge handling matters or should they get rid of that and go back to the old system where all judges handle family matters like divorce and custody cases currently the court has two dedicated sections that handle domestic work and i'm in favor of keeping that system because you have judges with a great deal of expertise in family law family law is one of the areas that the state bar association recognizes a specialization in and these cases often take more than six months or a year to handle and so having continuity of the judge that's handling the cases from beginning to end counts for a great deal, particularly when you have children that are involved. So I'm very much in favor of keeping those uh, dedicated divisions to uh, domestic law, uh, domestic matters. All right, thank you, Mr. Dye. Judge, same question in 60 seconds. Do you support the two dedicated family courts with the junior judge or should they go back to the old system? The domestic docket is very packed. It, it, it is, and I believe that having two dedicated seats would be very, is will continue to be beneficial for our community because as previously stated, the cases that proceed on may take more than six months and it's very specialized. Uh, I actually had experience in the domestic court as a law clerk for Judge Barrio, wherein I had an opportunity to get a realistic look of how efficiently a docket can move while still being aware of the judicial staff's needs. And in having these two dedicated seats and positions for just the domestic court would ensure that everybody is having some type of continuity with their cases having these two specific divisions. All right, thank you. Let's start this one off with you, Mr. Dye. Yes. And it's, it's a doozy, it's a yes or no. It's a simple yes or no. Okay. Yes or no, have you signed the recall petition against Latoya Cantrell? No, I have not. Judge Heather Barrett? I have not. I have not. All right. Oh, for three. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to start this question with you then, Judge Hunter Barrett. Really quickly, there was a hearing in civil district court that dealt with that matter. Uh, a lot of things have happened with that where an agreement was signed by the judge in that case. If you are elected, what kind of evidence would you require parties to put forth on the record when they are dealing with settlement cases? You have 60 seconds. Well, in relation to evidence that needs to be provided, it needs to ensure that it's proving their matter, of course, right? So with that being said, uh, it would ensure, I would need to hear the testimony to evaluate the credibility. I need to see what type of specific uh, documentation is being provided and the actual admi ad admissibility of this document. All 
All right, let's go to you, Mr. Dye. If you're handling a matter, what kind of evidence would you require for these settlement type cases to be put forth and on the record? Well, first off, just to be clear, Judge Medley signed a consent order right. between the parties, uh, or consent judgment between the parties. Uh, the Code of uh, Civil Procedure does not require production of evidence in order to enter into a consent judgment. Those parties before the court, and there were quite a few of them, agreed to the terms of their settlement, and that's protected. We have freedom of contract, and that's a form of contract, and so in that particular situation, there's not an evidentiary production requirement. In instances where there is a need for evidentiary production, that might reach a settlement later, then I'm, I'm going to adhere to the rules of evidence. All right, same question in 60 seconds, Ms. Bridges. Just like Mr. Dye just stated, that was a consent judgment. It didn't require any type of evidentiary uh, matter to, for this particular case. But I will follow the rule of uh, code of evidence in whatever matter I'm going to handle. All right, we, we would love to get more. We're gonna, we want to give you all a minute to do closing statements. But before we do that, here's another quick yes or no. We'll start this one with you. Yes or no. Do they need a new courthouse in New Orleans for civil district court? I've been in that building. That building is, yes. Okay, Mr. Dye? The legislature in 2010 said yes, and I'm saying yes today in 2023. All right, Judge? Absolutely yes. All right, so because we started with Ms. Bridges for opening statement, we're going to go right down the line again. You'll have 60 seconds all to make a closing statement and let people know why you feel you're the best candidate. So, Judge? Since you finished last time, you get to start us off here with 60 seconds for a closing statement. Thank you kindly. In my time at First City Court, I strongly believe that I kept my promises to ensure that every matter was handled with dignity and respect, to be well prepared, and ensure that I run my section efficiently, expeditiously, and judiciously. And I am confident that I will remain accountable to the same promises in civil district court. I have the compassion, the courage, and the commitment to serve our community well in civil district court. The compassion to have citizens from all walks of life who come before the court feel welcomed, respected, and confident that their voices are being heard by a fair and impartial judge. The courage to apply my solid understanding of the law and the commitment to work tirelessly to efficiently serve the public. My name is Marissa Huda Barrett. I'm currently a judge in First City Court, and I'd be honored to have your support in my endeavor to serve our community in civil district court Division B. My ballot is, number is number nine. Thank you kindly. All right, Judge, thank you. Mr. Dye, you have 60 seconds as well. The life that we live in New Orleans is a function of the decisions we make. The city of New Orleans can decide to have a civil district court that it's proud of. The city of New Orleans can decide to have a new building that everyone would feel safe going to, and something that would be bright and something that would be a great place to work and to go to it when you have problems. I feel like I'm the best, the best candidate for that. I have the experience in industry and in practicing law, the commitment and the problem solving skills to not only manage a courtroom, but also manage a courthouse. I'm not backed by any political group. I'm an independent candidate. It's the first time I've run. I'm focused on giving all that I have to this job. I'm not using this as a stepping stone for some other office, a uh, move to the appellate court or some move to industry. If elected, I'm going to serve the full term and hopefully be reelected. I'm David Jefferson Dye. I'm number eight on the ballot, and I ask for your support and your vote. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Ms. Bridges. You get to wrap us up 60 seconds for a closing remark. Again, my name is Stephanie Bridges, and I humbly ask you for your support. I have the diverse background in law and working, for, working hard for our community to make it a better place for us all. I am just excited to be in this race again. I fought hard to become a candidate again. And just like I fought hard to become a candidate, I will fight hard to ensure that justice and fairness exist within my courtroom. I humbly ask you for your support. My name again is Stephanie Bridges, and I'm number seven on the ballot, and I look forward to continue to serve this great community of the city of New Orleans. Thank you. All right. Congratulations, by the way, too. That oh. bell didn't go off too much. All of you all came in well <laughs> under the 60-second <laughs> mandate. So that's good. Stephanie Bridges, Jeff Dye, and Judge Marissa Hutter Barrett, thank you for your time. Election thank Day you. is March 25th. You can see this entire segment starting Monday morning on our website at WDA.